Carib Nation is presently in the office of the Prime Minister of Aruba. We are here on location discussing with the Prime Minister the success story that Aruba has been in the Caribbean and the example it has been giving around the world. Stay tuned. Carib Nation is up next. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, there is one clear choice. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. Both people inside and outside are very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you've traveled the journey. <laughs> One television organization brings America close to the people, stories, and events that affects Caribbean life. Get close, get answers, get Carib Nation. Welcome to Carib Nation. Today we are discussing Aruba. It is a country of 100,000 people with a per capita income of $25,000. Aruba is considered a success story in the world today. In the office of the Prime Minister of Aruba, we will be having a discussion about the secret to this success. Prime Minister, welcome to Carib Nation. And we are very pleased that you have consented to this interview in your beautiful office, which also overlooks the beautiful sea here in Aruba. Prime Minister, around 1989, when globalization started, this new era of globalization began to emerge in the minds of governments. The Caribbean economies had to adjust to globalization. And in doing that, they emphasized outward development. How did Aruba, during the 80s, make its adjustment to the new era of globalization in the 80s and the 90s? Now, logically, globalization has had in its influence not all over the world, and Aruba also as a small island. We have been looking for diversification of our economy. As you know, we are too dependable on tourists. We have the refining and we have the service center, our airport, logically, and our harbor. Um, alone, Aruba is not and significant in the world, but joining organization as the CTO, Caribbean uh, Tourist Organization, working um, together uh, more closely with countries in the region, but also with US, and an orientation with Trinidad, Colombia, Venezuela, many other countries, have given us the opportunity to develop uh, an economy that uh, the diversification uh, is not complete uh, yet. But we have seen that we can cope with uh, the effect of uh, globalization by growing the economy, giving investors uh, the opportunity, but doing the things together with other partners, uh, countries in the world. Because alone, uh, it will be very difficult to survive as an island. And as you know, as part of the kingdom, we with Holland, but also with the Antilles, we have been working closer together on economic issues that are important uh, for the development of this island. As you know, we don't have raw materials. So education, we put the accent on education. The better we educate our people and that they can compete, we can uh, afford the influence of um, globalization so that the people are more oriented, knowing what is happening in the world, what have to be done uh, to compete with the other countries. but. Competition is not the issue. The issue is how we can do things together, together that we have this uh, common goal. Tourism is a common goal in the whole um, Caribbean. Economic development is a common goal. Giving incentives, as you know, we don't give that um, many incentives like formally because we, we think that we are reasonable developed like now. So you sort of uh, reduce the incentives now, or we, you we abolish? We abolish the abolish law. Incentive. Logically, we think. Yeah, give me an example of before and now, and we, yes. how it's not negatively the abolition of, of the no incentives, incentives. How that has not negatively affected your economy? I give you an example. Uh, for instance, the refinery. They have had a long time for. Uh, 11 year tax holiday for many of their companies. The hotels, all of them, tax holiday. 
we have seen that the more hotel rooms you have, the refinery, the economic development, it creates more pressure on the infrastructure of the government. And we don't receive that income we expect of um, that development. So we took the decision that we abolish the law of incentive. Logically, we give other uh, opportunity for offshore uh, development on the island, but we have not seen that it affect because we have made Aruba a better product. So we can compete, and we don't have that many space anymore to develop so that we can make a choice. Formally, because of the development, we have had the obligation to give, to receive those investors. Nowadays, because of the good development of Aruba and the rating, and the education and the, our label on the island, our hospitality, um, I have not seen that this has influenced any influence negatively on ne our negative economic view. development. Yeah. And I think this should be continued, but for more islands in the Caribbean, because at certain moments we have to take care of our people, not only of the economic development, and the investors, they have to be part of the solution of the our social problem. responsibility. The, the diversification of the economy, let them give their fair share to the community. And um, since 2002, we abolished the law, and we have seen that this has not have had any negative effect now on one the investors. Of, one of the things I've observed in previous interviews that I've been doing on the island, and you have spoken of yeah. education, is that your people are increasingly computer literate, yes. as we would say. And you're very connected. There is yeah. interconnectivity and in banking, in communications, and ma many different areas. How have you been doing, since this is a small society, yeah. and people have direct access to you and the ministers and so forth, how have you been doing with e-governance? Logically, we started with our communication um, company, giving a better price to the whole community, that more and more people and students can be on the internet. And if you see how many people for a small island in Aruba are on the internet, we can say we are doing reasonable if we compare it with many other countries. Secondly, we have been cooperative with the schools in Aruba for computers at even at basic school at the last year, but also on the other education. You mean the education. Primary, primary level? Yes, yes, yes. And the government has online we, um, all our law, the structure of the government, so you can get information of over the whole development. We are not where we want to be, but this is a development. And I think that this uh, is important for Aruba that uh, e-governance, every day you see that the people want to know more. They want more information, and they can seek for that information for themselves. And we are busy in that uh, direction.